it's no secret that modern CPUs are honestly very, very power hungry. That's what they have to do now to compete and make sure that they can get the highest performance possible for the consumer. But sometimes when it's hot outside, we don't really want all this power. But there's a way that you can get the exact same performance with lower temperatures and lower power draw. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here and today we will be doing a guide on how to actually undervolt your CPU. Now, what exactly is undervolting? Undervolting is a very simple process. So the way you just want to think about it is taking stock clocks. So for example, for me on a 13900K running 5.5 all core, we're going to take that clock speed and instead of running at X stock voltage, we're going to lower it as much as possible. This is almost like the opposite of an overclock. An overclock is using more voltage and getting higher clock speeds. This is using less voltage trying to keep the same clock speeds. Just trying to get your CPU cool without losing any performance. But why would you want to do this? Well, most CPUs from Intel and AMD both actually come with a little bit more voltage than what's really needed. So today I will be going through an in-depth guide on how actually to overclock and undervolt through the BIOS. We will be running through some tests to make sure that it is stable and we will also be testing power draw in games so that we can really see what's the difference here and then you can fully decide if you want to do that. Before we get any farther make sure that you hit that like button down below and subscribe. If you enjoy this kind of content subscribe to my discord down below and also start writing a comment down below. Tell me what kind of CPU you have just let me know if how you enjoy undervolting. Let's get into it now. So when we are going to be undervolting, we're going to be using three softwares. They're just the ones I recommend. I'll leave them linked down below. First of all is Y Cruncher. This is a mix of like a CPU and a RAM test. One thing I'll do, let's just open up Y Cruncher. And you're going to have a lot of different options here. All you got to hit is just one, enter, seven, enter and then zero and it'll start the test. I'm not gonna start the test right now, but all of these tests kind of run a little bit different. Obviously you can see the difference between CPU and memory right here. I'm going to recommend that for most people, if you just want to not test RAM at all, or just a little bit of RAM, do BKT, BBP, SFT is basically all CPU and so is BBP. Um, FFT is all RAM, so don't worry about that one if you don't wanna use RAM. And then the brand new VT3, which is just a little, more it's the brand new test from Y Country. It's supposed to be the most extreme. If you don't want to and you just want to kind of do a little bit more basic overclock, you can always use OCCT. OCCT is a great testing software. I really would recommend this. It's really good for CPU, RAM, and GPU. Not really, in my opinion. It can be all right for the GPU with some of the newer tests. But let's just give it some time to load. And there it is, perfect. So you can set time limits. Um, if you're not paying for the software, the max you get is an hour. But so all of these tests are a little bit different. First of all, just set mode to extreme. That's what I'm gonna recommend. Your, AV, your instruction set. If you have AVX 512, go ahead and use AVX 512 if you'd like. AVX 2 is the max that I have. Data set. So, the sm so large, medium, small. Large is gonna be the easiest out of these tests. Medium is going to be medium, obviously, and small is gonna be very, very hard. There's gonna be a lot of heat. So. Let's actually start this test, and we're going to be actually able to see what kind of power draw we're getting here, and also what kind of voltages. So let's see right here. So here we have, let's check clock speeds right now. Let's see. So yeah, as you can see, 5.5 on the P cores, 4.3 on the E cores. 4.5 on the ring, 77 degrees, 1.27 volts, 200 watts. So the reason that this isn't running as good is just because of the fact that I am recording. So I am using my CPU just a little bit. That's why it's not going as insane. Okay, there it is. 313 watts, about 81 degrees. This is a lot. But now let's see what we're getting in Warzone. All right, here we are in a Warzone lobby. Now, just as a reminder, we are running 5.5 all core on the CPU, 4.3 on the ring, 4.5, sorry, 4.3 on the E cores, 4.5 on the ring, which is just a stock 13900K. Obviously your clock speeds and your voltages will be different depending on each one of your CPU models. Also, 
on my AIO, it is intaking and actually blowing warm air onto the GPU. Now, oh, that doesn't, that is not a big deal. Yes, it is, especially the, the hotter your graphics card gets, the more it's gonna downclock. So for example, I have a 2805, 970 millivolt undervolt run on this thing. The cooler I get my CPU, the better it will perform, obviously. At least the least it'll downclock, but 30 megahertz honestly isn't that much on these cards. It's fine. Just that does also affect the rest of the components inside of your computer. So let's fly in and we'll see what kind of power draw and what kind of FPS we're getting. Temperatures as well, we can check those too. So let's just see. Most important thing is just making sure we land in the exact same spot each time to make sure it is consistent. So let's land here. The GPU fans did just kick in. I thought that should be nice. So about 55, about 120, 830 watts of power draw, 57. Yeah. So this is obviously this isn't bad at all, but like it can be better, which is kind of the main deal. I will say this. Once it, I've, I'll, you'll hear this later in the video as well. But AMD fanboys need to stop compa comparing power draw and Cinebench and stuff. Look at in games. I'm pulling 120 watts with stock. Like, this is not bad at all. I do have hyperthreading dis hyper disabled because hyperthreading does not perform good. Um, for the games I play, just in my personal experience and my testing, I have done videos on the channel as well. Yeah. But now let's go into undervolting and you getting lower temperatures. Okay, so now that we are actually on desktop, we're just going to go to BIOS, so right click, restart the PC, and then we are going to hit the delete key on your keyboard to actually enter into the BIOS. If that doesn't work, you can try a different key, Google it, everyone most of the time uses delete or like F2, maybe you have like an HP or like an OEM, it might be a little bit weirder, but I have a gigabyte motherboard as well. Um, this is going to look a little bit different, but it should be very, very basic, be the same settings for everyone. So if it doesn't look the exact same for you, then it might look a little different. So there are a couple of things that I want to go over real quick. So you might see this thing called, so first of all, you might enter into something like easy mode, like this, hit F2 or whatever to get it to advance. Enhance multi-core performance. I tested this. I got about 5.6% higher clock speed. So instead of running 5.5 all cores, I ran 5.7. But I was getting about 20% more power draw. So I'm just going to leave that on auto. It isn't going to. So see it. Um, min and max ring ratio. This is your ring. We're not going to touch that. Then go to advanced CPU settings. A couple of things I want to say. Ring to core offset. This does really nothing. This is as long as you're running, you're fine. I do like to leave speed shift, all that stuff on still. You do need to have thermal velocity boost on for what we're trying to do. Um, the one thing I will say, undervolt protection on these newer CPUs, I believe this is 13th gen and 12th gen. Just make sure that if there's any undervolt protection settings on and you disable them because if not, then the undervolt isn't going to do anything. Maybe with AVX offset. I like to set this to zero. Don't really need to do this, but I like to do it. Active turbo ratios, that doesn't do anything. If you want to disable your e cores, don't be weird. CPU C6. This will be probably on like auto. I like to enable it and then just disable enhanced C states. This will give you a little bit more performance in games. Turbo power limits, max amount. I do that. If you typically have like an AIO and you plug something into the pump, it typically will actually do this now for you, which is really, really cool. But now we're just going to hit escape. And here is how you undervolt. Now, this is for an Intel CPU, so this is going to be a little different. So there's going to be a couple other things you can do. You can do like adaptive and then start a core, do an offset. Like I could do like negative 0.5. 0.5 that isn't well does this let me do negatives let's see can i do a negative with this yes i can i could do like zero but i don't like doing it this way for most asus motherboards and msi just not the gigabytes this is actually how you want to do it so leave like an auto and then there'll be like a negative sign but what i'm going to do is i'm going to do auto v core and then what i do is i set my v core mode to normal Dynamic V core, I like to set a good starting basis. I'd say it's about 0 0.05 right here. This should work on a lot of the CPUs, unless you have a really bad, really, really bad CPU. Another thing, I do have hyperthreading disabled. It performs best for me in all my games with E cores enabled. 
but if you do need the extra cores, you might not be able to undervolt as much, obviously. But so CPU V core needs to be normal, 0 0.05. This is gonna this is like a pretty normal over undervolt. I can do 0 0.07. This is what I'm gonna run. Negative 0 0.07, and I'm gonna hit F10 and enter. And now we just gotta wait for it to actually boot into Windows, and then we can actually compare voltages to before and after as well as power draw and really see the difference. Quick, before we actually go to BIOS and Undervolt, start a comment now. Write what kind of CPU you have and we're going to write our before temps from OCCT, small AVX2, and then we're going to actually do an after comparison and post them down below so that other people can get the results and see how much lower power draw and how much lower temperatures are you getting with an Undervolt to show how much it helped you. Here we are back into Windows now. So we are going to be running OCCT again. Remember, run this for an hour before just to make sure that it's fine and that you don't have any weird instability or anything. Obviously, you don't want to be running an instability at the start and then think that this undervolt guide is what's causing the undervolt. I'm going to say this real quick. Anything you do here is not my fault. If you end up breaking your CPU from too low voltage, it's not my fault. I'm not responsible for anything that happens during this. But... Let's start it now, and we're going to see what kind of power draw, what kind of voltage we're using. So we're using about 1.27 before with over 300 watts. So let's see what kind of voltage we're getting now. 1.26, 0.27, but look, we're only getting 278 watts. So we, we dropped about 30-ish watts in this kind of game. I mean, in this workload, which obviously is the most extreme workload, but so instead of like 315 divided by 277, we are... I don't know how to do the math. <laughs> so 317 divided by 280. We're getting a 13% drop in power draw for the exact same frequencies. This is honestly insane. Also, we're running about 77 degrees. Now we're about 73, maybe even higher before. It's like we're dropping insane amount of power, meaning that we won't downclock. We'll have any temperature issues. But now let's go into war zone and see what we really get. All right, so here we are in Warzone now, and I think that what you might see is, first of all, the FPS might be a little bit different just depending on how you land. Obviously, we are more worried about power draw, though, which isn't changed as much. Um, I think that this will be fine. Let's just see. Ready, jump. And now we'll get back to him. It lands. All right, here we have landed, so we're getting about 230, 245 FPS. Getting about 116, 120 watts with about 49 degrees. It's pretty good, honestly. 5.5 also. This is performing better. Oh, come on. Wait, can I get him? Let's see. Perfect. See, you just get better at games, too. Like That's the most important part, too. And as you can see, my FPS is staying very, very consistent. Still getting about that 100. 1520 watts depending on where you are it might actually drop to about a hundred too also every time like an amd fanboy talks about how oh pull like 300 watts in a game like in all honesty this is what you're gonna pull 99 percent of the time in a game is about 120 watts which is really really good obviously like this is about the same thing that an amd cpu will pull Every other CPU is going to do that. It's just that AMD doesn't allow for high power limits in test, which is why they lose a lot of times. Let's see. But, it, oh. Yeah. Um, I'm going to finish up this game, and then we'll hit the little conclusion, okay? Well, there we have it. If you guys did enjoy this video and this guy did help you, make sure that you do hit that like button down below. Subscribe. Do all that stuff to help me. Obviously, if this video did help, share it with your friends join the discord as well and we can get in a little bit more of a conversation we are always talking about hardware and anything in the discord especially in that vip chat a lot happens in that vip chat but see you guys later peace